First of all, spoilers for the entire game ahead. Stop watching if you haven't finished it, okay? Second, this video goes up in obscurity the further you get into it. The first few are pretty easy to spot and are things you very likely know already unless you weren't paying attention. So yeah, I've timestamped everything from start to end, so if you feel like one fact is boring or something you already know, you can just skip ahead to the next one. Please keep that in mind. Let's start with fact number one. The Black Silences moveset is heavily based on Devil May Cry's mechanics. This one is pretty obvious. The Black Silences arsenal carries a large variety of weapons which range from blunt instruments, blades, to even guns. This fact is straight up confirmed by one of the game developers in the art book, making it one of the least obscure facts unless you skipped it by accident or didn't read the art book. Though not like we need it confirmed when Roland literally uses Milk Workshop like he's judgement cutting anyways. Number 2. The Gloves of the Black Silence In receptions, it's fairly obvious that the gloves act as a dimensional storage which the color pulls weapons out of. However, it also has the ability to muffle all sounds surrounding the- This is why the Black Silence is far more comparable to an assassin in their niche, the same way other color fixers fit themselves into other categories. Number 3. Durandal most of Roland's weapons are named after the workshop that produced them. We don't really know much about them, and only one of them gets mentioned in the in-game story. However, one weapon stands out above the rest, being Durandal. It doesn't sound like a very workshopish name, and we can see him building it even before he started using the gloves of the Black Silence. The developers also state that this was the only weapon he wielded in the past as well. So, what makes this weapon so special? Well, it's time to start talking about fact number 4. The Chow Fixers of Chow's Office The Chow Fixers of Chow's Office are very obviously based on the Chow Paladins of Charlemagne. Characters like Roland, Olivier, Astolfo Renoir, Hell, even Bayard all reference the iconic figures of medieval Europe. Roland in particular is a fairly important character in most versions of the Chow Paladins. In some tales, he's even made the nephew of King Charlemagne. His main weapon, Durandal, is said to have possibly been passed down from the king himself. How our Roland in the Project Moon universe got his version is unknown, whether it was a gift from Charles or something he always had. The earliest point in time in which we see him wielding Durandal in his hands is when he takes on the Blood Red Knight with Angelica. However, he does state that he uses a sword when talking to Salvador during the Smoke War. Unfortunately, the weapon is kept out of view. <laughs> All of that is speculation though, so keep that in mind. Their personalities also seem to hold true with the original European epics. Olivier and Roland reminisce about how Olivier was always the more level-headed of the two, which is something portrayed in the Song of Roland. Most notably, his book even has a quote similar to one in the French epic. It really shows how much detail Project Moon tried to go into, but also really how much they omit as well. Roland in the original Song of Roland story was betrothed to Olivier's sister, Aude, who we basically know next to nothing about and so far has not even gotten a mention in the Project Moon universe. Instead, Project Moon took inspiration from Orlando Inamorato and Orlando Furioso instead, with his obsession with Angelica being emphasised a lot more. One thing I also found interesting was Project Moon's emphasis on Roland's grandma. I can't seem to recall a moment in any of the three European poems where his family is generally brought up. So if you guys have any idea, put your suggestions in the comments below. Number 5. Angelica's Pages in Jaehyun's Reception When Angelica returns as a puppet in Jaehyun's Reception, she uses a few unique pages that reference the blunt pages of the Black Silence prior to their rework. You know, back when they had a one cost Selkova workshop with a counter die. Angelica still has that version of Zelkova though with the slash die being turned into a blunt one. She also still has a version of Old Boy's Workshop and even a far weaker version of Views Industry. All of them still carry their specific card effects and even have fairly similar row ranges other than wheels. I wish they explored that aspect a bit more. 
Imagine if she had like a blunt version of all the Black Silences pages, though that would have probably spent quite a lot of Jae Hyun's power budget. Number 6. The Black Silences Identity I didn't plan on putting this so high up, but I've had to explain this so many times that I chose to do so. Roland is not the Black Silence. In the art book, Kali Iori and even Argalia are given a title under their grade specifying their status as a color. Roland does not have this, simply because he is not the Black Silence. His wife Angelica was. This is basically stated in the art book under the Distorted Ensemble. Most people were unable to recognize Roland when he was using his wife's gloves, mistaking him for the Black Silence. Now. How did people mistake Roland and Angelica, two very different looking people? Number 7. The Perception Blocking Mask Roland's mask is called the <laughs> Perception Blocking Mask, who would have guessed, which blurs one's presence in a crowd. Specifically, it makes eyewitnesses barely perceive the wearer, making them barely appear in their blind spot or blind point. This made it so that the only identifiable thing about Roland was the unmistakable quiet that surrounded the gloves which the Black Silence was synonymous with. So Roland isn't the Black Silence. But that shouldn't matter. In his reception, he distorts as the Black Silence, showing that even though he doesn't hold the title, he does truly identify and resonate with it. Number 8. The Chow Fixer's Passive This is something I see complained about very frequently. Why doesn't Roland have the Chow Fixers as a passive? Most of the time, it's attributed to game balance, but there is an in-universe reason for this, though it's a little bit jank. It's because Roland isn't using his page. He's using his wife's, who is explicitly excluded from the Chow Fixers multiple times. The Black Silence was never included as one of the Chow Fixers, which is why it lacks the passive. And then there's the game balance factor as well. You know, 7 to 9 Duran dolls, 5 to 7 Ranga workshops, it's a little bit insane. Number 9. A Prayer for Loving Sorrow. The poem that both Roland and Angelica quote throughout Library of Rina's story is actually a French poem written by Francis Jams between 1898 and 1900. It should be noted that while Orlando Furioso and Orlando Innomorato are Italian works, the Song of Roland which precedes both is actually French in nature, which is likely one of the reasons why Project Moon chose A Prayer for Loving Sorrow as one of the dominant parts of Roland's character. The Prayer for Loving Sorrow is a part of the Morning of Primulas under a specific section called the 14 Prayers. There are 13 other prayers here that are actually fairly interesting, but uh, I unfortunately do not speak French. For those of you fluent in the language, I would appreciate it a lot if any of you could drop us a translation of some of these. Lastly, I think it's fairly likely that Project Moon referenced the poem due to its inclusion in a novel called The Investigation, written by Zhang Myung Lee. Project Moon overall makes quite a lot of references to one poet who is a major character of this novel, Yun Dong Ju. Sky, wind, stars, and poem is something constantly quoted throughout Library of Rina at major points in the game. For example, the start of every single chapter. In addition, Angela's bed N even pulls a line from it. Or even in Salt Pepper and Todd Police by Millie. He's an extremely prominent figure and one that you might want to find out more about yourself. And that covers most facts I thought were interesting about Roland and Angelica. I didn't quite elaborate as much as I wanted to because I was afraid of getting stuff wrong, but I hope you learned something new from this video. I'll post a comment with some of the research I did that I was a little bit scared of putting in the video. So if you want to find out more, there's some stuff down there. My regular viewers might be wondering why I'm being so nice right now and also very informative. I uh, started a Patreon. Okay, look, money's been tight, all right? So um, if you're interested, please do check it out. I'm not going to drag this out for too long. So as usual, thanks for sticking around to the end. Make sure to visit again, yeah? See you guys later.